Greetings and welcome to the Tiger's Den. This is the voice of Cheryl, and I bring to you a true story, breaking news. I saw on X that Judge Belinda Edwards would be the individual who the paperwork of the esteemed Attorney Weinstein papers have been assigned to. I also saw an ex where he stated it is his understanding that no one in the superior level can hear this. And I saw a lot of different people saying that wonder will all of those judges recuse themselves since they know Judge Glanville very well. Well, I don't know what the outcome will be. I just want to report on the story. Ironically, last night, I was scrolling through Facebook and I ran across an article from the Fulton County Judges Watchdog Team. And it was on judicial misconduct, public reporting. And I'll put the link in the description. And this was back in 2020 when this was written. And so let me share with you guys what I found. I like to just try to keep my people in the know of what's going on. We do our best. I try to bring you the most current and trustworthy material. It says, Judge Belinda Edwards has finally been dislodged from some of her cases that she was overseeing and wrongfully ruling on. Judge Belinda Edwards has a horrific history of bizarre, wild, illegal ruling. As a result, her removal as juvenile judge Unfortunately, the judicial system chose to recycle her to the superior courtroom. This resulting in same continued behavior, but like all things, this too will come to pass. Judge Belinda Edwards' day in the court system are coming to an end at some point for her continued judicial misconduct. Recently, Judge Edwards began dislodge, uh, being dislodged from some of her cases and being named as one of 24 defendants in a very serious civil rights and human rights federal lawsuit case based on deliberate indifference and excessive force and illegal arrest. And as a result of her judicial misconduct, the defendant in this case was nearly unalived and has been declared permanently disabled and handicapped as a result of her rulings based of perjury by plaintiff and Judge Belinda Edwards, who both changed the officiated facts from the divorce decree from another court and Judge Edwards perpetuated the perjury by committing fraud of the court. And there was a case open up on Judge Edwards, but the immunity aspect that allowed Judge Edwards to get away with these wrongs. So finally, this defendant was compelled to file in the federal courthouse for a multi-million dollar lawsuit in federal court that is located at Atlanta, Northern District of Georgia, United States, Federal District Court, location 75 Ted Turner Drive, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. Case number as follows. 1 colon 21 dash CV dash 00457. 
And you can look that up in the PACER system, which is the federal system. You have to sign up for that system. And it does cost for you to be able to look at the document. Some are free, but um, I don't know if it's if you have a case, but the majority are 10 cents a page. And it could be more than that if you don't have a case. I don't honestly know. So you want to read Pacer's information to make sure. Judge Belinda Edwards has willfully held several different attorneys for competent act for competence actually for simply challenging the wrongs and the consistent judicial misconduct. And in fact, I believe one particular attorney was held on $250,000 contempt from Judge Edwards due to these attorneys who were challenging Judge Edwards for her malicious, vindictive prosecution of their clients. And she hands down her orders and findings that are Ill illegal based on the matter of laws. She creating a debtor's prison and that against defendants who truly don't have the ability to lay a debt. So I think they meant pay a debt. So Judge Edwards makes up her own laws and findings based on her mind set of that day and the misuse of powers in reference to her discretionary powers that almost unalive this defendant. In this case, in Fulton County, please look up this case, 2010CV, number sign 185169. You would not believe what you will see when you read this case. It is horrific what the Fulton County Superior Court, specifically Judge Belinda Edwards, allowed this to happen to the defendant over a simple case. It says FIFA judgment over credit card debt that the plaintiff did not have the ability to pay the debt to the estranged plaintiff. And that must be defendant in the case. Who is now a stalker of plaintiff and plaintiff's family for 11 years now. And the superior court judges allow this misconduct. So they wrote the best they could. And they were probably really into this article. And I read the best I could. Now, I received some information, but before I go there, I wanted to share with you guys how these women, and these are all call themselves black women, talk about how the system is against them and how great they are in their positions, and they love to brag on their education, and they have accolades out the yin-yang. And so I'm not going to list all of the accolades but I will say that she came to the judicial assignment. And let me just stop sharing that and share this so you guys can see where I got my information from. Thanks to Asator, he taught me how to be sure and add credibility to the story. By letting you guys know I'm not just making this up off the top of my head. And so hopefully the information is correct. And if it's not, then I believe that they intend it to be. And I'm getting it from a reliable source. This information came from her website. These are the people that are in office that are talking about their education, how great they are, how hard they struggle, how black women really deserve to show the world how great they are. But they're showing the world just how silly this is, just how wrong it is. I am an Asiatic woman. 
people who call themselves black. And I will support anybody that's a human being because we're all human. There's only one race. No matter the ethnicity, but do understand, just like everybody else, I really care for my people and my interest is in my people, but there is nobody that I wouldn't be willing to help if I could help them. Taking advantage of marginalized people is wrong. And I know D.A. Fonnie Willis goes to these churches and they call them black churches and spew this hatred and visceral throughout Fulton County talking about how we're mistreated how we can't be the backbone for everybody but you can lay on your back for a married man whose wife is ill and she thought she had a husband until she was served with divorce papers in the church don't mention it you're forgiven Tell Jesus all about it. That's wrong. And we're wrong for standing for wrong. Now, we all make mistakes. We can't get away from that. But we're talking about a whole group of people, her people, people that she grew up like most of them. And perhaps she had it a little better because her father was an attorney but I know not because I practice law not because I'm an attorney not because I went to anybody's school but I've dealt with attorneys I've spoken with attorneys I'm friends with attorneys and I know if you're not bringing money into the firm that you work for if it is not your own then you're a starving attorney and life is just as hard for you as it is for a starving artist. I know that. So for you women to be mothers, the givers of life, nurturers, to get in those positions and pretend you have to be men, all men, are, they're not bad. This system was not designed for us, of course. But I can tell you this. If we get the opportunity, we should do the right thing. The Constitution was designed with us in mind. Oh, it was some tweaking. I understand that. And I know a lot of people think that we need the 13th or the 14th and the 15th amendment to make us relevant in our land. That's not true. We're indigenous to this land. All Europeans came here, Listen to their stories. They're very proud of where they come from. Unfortunately, we were colonized history stolen so we all have to make up these great stories from Africa as if this is not I wished we would just listen and research we could help each other out everybody should be filing complaints to the proper places you have that right. The Constitution give you that right. It, it, it doesn't give you because you have what we call unalienable rights, meaning you were born with these rights, but the Constitution ensures that you receive the rights. And trust me, not all, but there are some real people in this world that believe in the Constitution. And they would lay down their life defending it. I am one of them. And there are many Europeans too. 
a lot of us don't even know the Constitution. But we can't even begin to start to fight back. But I want you to hear or just see this education. She's a Superior Court of Fulton County Judge, Belinda E. Edwards. I know her family is proud of all of her accomplishments. I don't know if they know how she performed her duties. I would venture to say they struggled. Perhaps they were millionaires. I honestly don't know. My point, her judicial assignment, January 2017 to present, Superior Court of Fulton County, September 2008 through December 2012, Chief Judge Fulton Juvenile Court, January 25th through September 2008, Judge Fulton County Juvenile Court. Her education, she boasts of a bachelor, BA in economics from Stanford University, an MBA in finance and accounting, Columbia University, and a Juris Doctorate, Georgia State University, College of Law. She has a plethora of accolades and she is an AKA sorority girl. And it is unfortunate that those organizations, the Boule, as they call themselves, which will be here in Dallas starting Monday, the convention will be here. And no, I'm not affiliated, but I have relatives that are, and I'm proud of their accomplishments. I'm proud of the women that are there that sacrifice and that actually do service in the community and don't just attend conferences throughout the United States, men and women. But there is something about the women in Georgia, and I don't know if you all are riding on the reputation of Martin Luther King, but you know, we found out, as he told us right before he left, that he knew he sold us up the river without a paddle. He knew <laughs> all of a sudden he wanted to share that America gave us a blank check and it was insufficient fun. There are many people hurting in your chocolate city. We've seen what you guys do to whistleblowers. We see what you do to rappers. We see what you do to the children. We see what you do to the people that are incarcerated and have been incarcerated in the county jail they haven't even gone to court have not even been indicted and have been in jail from anywhere to 45 to 10 45 days to 10 years and funny says that everybody's an idiot or they're ignorant or they don't know what they're talking about and certainly they couldn't care about criminal justice. Neither does she. You women are really hurting our heart as women who just work on everyday jobs. Maybe we don't even have a job. Maybe we would look up to you guys as the example until we investigate. And that's why I suggest everybody to do their own research. Don't ever just take my word or anybody's word. Do your work. L.A. Pink is there in Georgia. He lives in Douglasville. He served all of the counties around. And she has the grassroots organization, Street Rumors. Those people are working hard. Big Jeff, Young Thug's father, putting in the work. Little Rod's dad fighting for his son. 
the infamous Sylvia has a platform and she goes to these trials and she shares the inside views that we don't get to see on the law and crime videos. And the day that that woman stood up, Miss Love, and lied on that attorney, Mr. Milnick, by saying that he was getting all of his vibe from over there, meaning the defense side. And he shrugged his shoulders. And if he shrugged his shoulders, why she or the judge or Miss Hilton didn't call it out in the middle of court? makes no sense I've been listening to some tapes of them some clips I found of some things I'm not great with editing so I can't make the beautiful slide in videos that I would love to make to tell the story smoothly I have to just tell it the way I tell it and I appreciate all of my subscribers that continue to support me and all of the new subscribers that click on and for however long you can stay. I appreciate that. By the way, if you're this far in the video, hit the like button for me. Leave a comment. Consider subscribing if you're not subscribed and joining my membership. It really helps when we have engagement on our videos, if we have likes, if we have comments, then YouTube will push our videos, no matter how small our subscribers are. They need to know that people really are listening and enjoy what we do. On today, there's this gentleman. I really enjoy him, and he is Thugger Daily. And what he does, Mr. Daly, and I know that he's not going by Mr. Daly, because I, I really, really, really hate when people call me Mr. Toothless, because trust me, that's just my name for YouTube. But he put out some information today that I thought was interesting and I want to share with you guys. I'll probably be sharing it tomorrow night as well when I do my regular show. But I told myself I was gonna try to do more videos. And this article was on X. <clears throat> and I like to just put it on paper because you know I have problems with my eyes. I see better, but I'm still not 100% 2020 or whatever they call the vision. I'm not there yet. And I don't believe I'll ever be at 65 and I'm getting closer to 66. <laughs> so I just take it as I get it. But he shared with us some information. It's from Thugger Daily. It was posted. 100 of the Young Thug trial is this Monday. Breakdown of Judge Glanville's court schedule over the past seven months, starting November the 27th, 2023. And the headline reads, Day 100 of the Young Thug trial is this Monday. Breakdown of Judge Glanville's court schedule over the past seven months. Starting November 27, 2023. 63 full days, 34 half days, three days canceled after judge took bench. 59 days off, excluding weekend. Now just tell me who could work on their job. And in seven months, this is how you perform. Oh, it gets better. Here's the calendar. And you can't read it, and I didn't put it there for reading's sake. But this is something that I always 
you know, questioned about Miss Love and Miss Hilton scheduling Woody to start the testimony on that Monday, which they would have started it before then, they say. I don't believe that. I think they know exactly what they were doing. Mr. Melnick told the court, he shared with the court that he had been in contact with Miss Love as late as June of 2023. It started out in 2021. So she knew. And then it's amazing how Miss Hilton stood up and talked about how she believed. She believed that was his. She believed somebody said it wasn't his. She believed. But yet, at the end, got real bold and said he told Miss Love he wasn't his attorney. And then Miss Love gets up and say, tell him to let his person know that we will keep him in jail. Like it's her courtroom. And I know she too used to be in juvenile justice, injustice, I would say. And she and Fonny ran on game, game, game. Well, they seem like political gangbangers. I got that from L.A. Pink. I thought that was a great title. No one is above the law. But this is his schedule, and this is what it looks like. And so, this is how it looks broken down. November. Four days. Full days. So, let's get this straight so we'll know. We get down. Full days, half days, days off. November, four days. They started November. December, three full days, two half days, 16 off days. January, nine full days, three half days, 11 off days. February, nine full days, seven half days, five off days. March, seven full days, Five half days, ten off days. April, eleven full days, seven half days, four off days. May, nine full days, five half days, nine off days. June, eleven full days, five half days. Four off days. And I believe they're going to start off being off on July 1st. And you know, this is the week of the 4th of July. These people are only getting paid $25 a day. Now, I know some jobs, especially government jobs, and especially here in the state of Texas, and I realize we all are different with our different constitutions, but we can just sign that check over and we get our regular pay. I don't know for how long that happens because these people have been here. It took them 10 months to seek the jury, they said, in And perhaps it was eight months because they're supposed to have been into this case now about 18 months. So you do the math. I could get it wrong. I'm not that great. Again, I try to stay as near to the story as I possibly can. Integrity is integrity on all levels. And I don't want to put anything on anybody that they don't deserve. Nobody deserves injustice. 
injustice to one of us is injustice to all of us. Maybe not today, but it's coming. Most of us are afraid to speak up and to speak out. What are we afraid of? Most say they believe in a holy God and they fear no man but a holy God. I ask, what God do you believe? The acronym, Government Ordinance Department, or Gold, Oil, and Drugs. Gold, Oil, and Diamonds. What God do you believe in? That you would watch this happening. That we as a people have not come together enough to where we can even have conversations in our families. And put aside every weight for the greater good. Everybody's not going to do it and that's why it hasn't happened. But it take a few of us to sound the alarm. There's nothing I can do in Texas but sound the alarm. Make a video. And I know many people don't watch my video. But one day they will. And I want the truth to be there. I want honor and integrity to be there. And no, I'm like all others. You know that line they love to use? We're imperfect beings. We all are. We all fall short of other people's expectations and sometimes even our own. I do the best that I can. But the level of integrity, honor, love, peace, freedom, and justice. To thine own self be true. And I promise you, if you're true to yourself, you'll be true to everybody you meet. They may not like your truth. So you might not be liked by everybody you meet. You will definitely be true to yourself and to them. So on that note, I'm going to get ready to close. I just want to make a video to share this news. Hopefully, Attorney Weinstein was correct. And hopefully, with his correction, Someone else outside of the superior court, maybe the magistrate, the solicitors, whoever will get to hear this. And they all, I'm sure, know each other. It's a small community. But most people do their work in honor and dignity. Most people. There's a selected few in all ethnicities that choose to do what they do. And it's nothing we can do about it. Not that individual, but we can do something about the behavior. We can petition whether it's good or bad or indifferent, whether they don't like it or not. You can always write. Everybody answers to somebody. You just have to be persistent. And for those who love the word, read Luke 18, starting with one. And read about the wicked judge who feared not God or man. This one little woman kept bothering him and wearing him. You know what he did? He pardoned her. So if you be the one that keeps rattling the cage, you'll be the one that breaks. And that's just one woman's opinion. Again, I don't practice law. I don't give legal advice. But I'm 65 years old. I have a world of knowledge. I've had some fascinating jobs. And I've had to learn a little bit of everything in doing my job. And I share my knowledge. 
my skills, my abilities. This is what I have to lead to the world. And YouTube has given me the opportunity. X, Instagram, Facebook. I don't post much. But I do what I can. So again, if you got this far in the video, please hit the like button. Share with somebody. I always say three. Three is the trinity. Three is the braided cord that's not easily broken. Three. Although many of our children don't know their fathers. But they're not the only one. Many of them, by design, don't know their fathers. And it has cost us greatly. But we can even rectify that. Mothers, you're nurturers. You're the givers of life. You're the first teacher the first love you are powerful beautiful no matter how you look or feel not predicated on men it's who you are you were created for that your situations your circumstances your environment may take you through a lot of things but everything that you need. Your mother gave it to you from birth. So in order to know who you are, don't look outside of yourself. Don't listen to the things people say about you. Go inside deep. Call on that God that you believe in. Manifest the Christ in you. Manifest it. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. Doesn't mean you won't have to pay bills. Doesn't mean you might can't pay your bills. But it means that you'll have a sense a semblance of what it's like. An idea of perfection. And that's just living in harmony with nature and mankind. That's what it's about. Uplifting and helping one another. As you know, I believe the children are our future. And so I'm going to end. I want to thank you if you got this far. If you scrolled through, I appreciate it. I'm leaving the Tigers Den. Goodbye. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us who we use to be everybody searching for a hero people need someone to look up to i never found anyone to fulfill my needs a lonely place to be so i learned to depend on me i decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadow if i failed if i succeed at least i'll live as i believe no matter what they take from me they can't take away my dignity because the greatest love of all is happening to me.
I found the greatest love of all inside of me. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. And if by chance that special place that you've been dreaming of takes you to a lonely place, find yourself in love. 